And it may be early. It may be early, but it's not that early. <laughs> it's time for us to bring in our first guest, and that is Alan Blagden, who has uh, got an opening reception, who's got uh, art being actually being shown uh, at uh, the Sharon Historical uh, Gallery. Uh, it's on view actually through October 25th, inspired by Audubon, the art of Alan Blagden. And Alan has graciously uh, gotten up early this morning uh, to talk to us. Alan, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Oh, good morning. It's bright and early, and I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now, this exhibit actually started in September, and uh, it was all uh, all inspired. Uh, there was a whole series of events uh, uh, to honor uh, Audubon, uh, and uh, yours is is uh, is the one that's that we're gonna, we're gonna focus in right now because it, it runs through October 25th. Uh, Inspired by Audubon, I, I, explain to us, Alan, uh, how early that uh, that the uh, the works by Audubon inspired you. Um, I think well, I've always loved birds, and I love painting birds. And obviously, you start with Audubon at a young age, and um, I, I guess I came back to it. I didn't even know I was going to be an artist. In fact, well, I, my father was the art teacher at Hotchkiss for twenty-two years, and then. I graduated from Cornell with a Bachelor of Fine Arts and had no idea what I was going to do. Ended up, I guess, well, no, I had a trekkered career. I ended up um, making movies in Chatsford, Pennsylvania, with NCYS grandson, who was a friend of mine. And then I realized, uh, I, so from there I went to, uh, I did end up as, as illustrator for the Ornus ornithology department of the Smithsonian, and that was really fun. Um, but then I started, I said, wait a minute, I don't want to end up in scientific illustration. So I said, okay, paint nine to five and see if it works. And and, and my guess that the difference between scientific illustration and being your own, the master of your own domain is the fact that uh, you don't have to strict sit the strict rules uh, when you're doing something for uh, for science, but you can take your interpretation and then put your take on it when you do it as your as your as yourself as an artist. It's called make mistakes. And be <laughs> proud of them. Right. <laughs> no, it would I it would have been say you're the scientist on the third floor at the Smithsonian. You would come to me and say, I need this by Thursday. But what he left out is you have to paint it through the microscope. <laughs> it's got to be scientifically correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that explains that. Well, what's interesting about about what you're doing in your portion of it is basically uh, wild and beautiful creatures. The life and work of J.J. Audubon has is going on through the 21st. It's a collaborative program. There's your exhibit at the Sharon Historical Society, and then the Tremaine Gallery at Hotchkiss School has an exhibit, and of course Sharon Audubon itself uh, was involved in it. Uh, did did you did you like to watch birds develop at an early age. I know my mother, who moved up from the city back when I was, you know, back in the 1950s, uh, it took her about 10 or 15 years, but all of a sudden in the late 60s, uh, uh, she just started buying books on birds, viewing birds, feeding birds, uh, taking pictures of birds. Um, but yours obviously started much earlier than that. Uh, well, it did, and my parents were very, um, very generous in letting me bring home everything from baby owls to alligators and i had a red-tailed hawk too <laughs> and, and that was illegal because i was a student at hotchkiss actually and I kept the hawk in the closet till somebody found it well you, you wouldn't have been a student at school if you didn't do something that was wrong i'm sure you could have oh, done true. much worse than that <laughs> so so now we're talking about your works with uh, with, with 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 birds and, and and things like that. I mean, do, do, is that truly your favorite thing to work on, or or do you have you know, does your scope uh, go out from that where you have other really favorite things you like to to work on? Oh as well? no, I, I do. I could have I could really have been a portrait painter, but then I really didn't like. I like choosing a portrait. I just don't like being commissioned and go after go and you have to move into the person's house, and you have to be wined and dine. I mean, it's, I, it's, it's sounding like poor me, but no. I, I love to, to uh, well, here's an example. I did, I went to Morocco, and I loved it, and I wanted to paint 
a man I saw there who was in charge of the place we were staying. And I got home and painted a big oil, which I don't usually do much of, uh, him holding a bowl of tangerines. And I wanted to, I thought, oh dear, I need another figure in this. So I looked, I just waited. Sooner or later I knew what happened, and I found this wonderful looking face, uh, young man taking tickets at the Javits Center in New York. And so I waited for a lull in the ticket line, and then I went up to him and said, look, this isn't the line. It's, uh, it's, I'm true. I'm really an artist. I'd love to have you pose for me, and I'd pay you. And finally he consented, and I went back to New York on my lunch hour, and on his lunch hour, and worked on him. And um, Well, that's, that's my approach to portraits now. I, I love to do them. Well- I think it, it's it's I think it's what's great about it is you like to be in control. I, I mean, I mean I know I worked for I've worked in my in radio my whole life since I got out of high school. I've been in radio, and I enjoyed it. I learned a lot along the way, but there was nothing ever so refreshing than when we teamed up with Jill Goodman and we started this radio station because it's truly comes from the images in our mind. Jill's in my mind. Oh, you're yeah, right. I hear and, it. And, and and it's totally different. And it's and it's. And it's a lot of work, but it's ours, and it's formulated around us. And I can imagine there's no greater feeling for an artist than that freedom. Uh, it is. You're, yeah, and you're on your own. You're self-employed, and it has its flaws, <laughs> obviously, you can say. <laughs> um, I don't feel like getting up today, or something, but then you wait. Then you have to deal with, with galleries, and I had many galleries in New York City. And um, you've got to be a, you've got to be a real business sense and I don't have one but I'm learning <laughs> <laughs> and I don't you say subject I'm a realist painter that's definite and I must say obviously Audubon's been a great experience and what well I'll mention Chris Robinson put this show together at the Hotchkiss School Gallery yeah. and then he approached me and said uh, would I put some in the Sharon Historical and uh, I said sure and so that is on until, uh, well, I know that this Saturday I'm going to give a talk there. So yep. well, it's going to be a walk and talk at 4 o'clock. At, at, uh, this, is that the 12th? Yes, at the, at, the, at the Tremaine Gallery, right? No, oh, no, where? no, at oh, the Sharon. Oh, it's going to be at Sharon. Oh, it's just going to be here in Sharon. Okay. It's gotten very confusing between Hodgkin I know. <laughs> School, Hodgkiss Library, uh, Audubon <laughs> here and there, but I, I just tell everybody, no, do not miss the Tremaine Gallery at the Hotchkiss School. And then if anybody's free, come Saturday to the Sharon Historical at 4 o'clock. Well, you know what's nice about it? The weather's going to break for Saturday and Sunday. Oh, as, as it looks right now. I mean, whatever. <laughs> as it looks well, right now. But, but now the art in your family continue, continues on even to the younger generations now in the Blagden family. Um, yes. I think that's great when something like that uh, takes a strain through an entire, you know, through multi generations of a family. I know my father was in entertainment. I was never nearly as talented as he was, uh, and so I chose my own path to go into this. Um, but I can imagine how it feels to have a family over generations uh, really uh, get in so involved with with one field of work. Well, it's in my my. There, there are four of. I have three siblings. There are two sisters between me and my brother, and he's a photo- nat- uh, nat- nature photographer. Uh, and he just gave a book, a book uh, signing and a lecture at the White Hart, along with uh, um, oblong, right. oblong books, which was great. So he and I get along really well, even though there's 14 years between us. Well, I just think uh, I think this exhibit which is going on and like i said it, it runs uh, uh through uh the 25th on the on display wednesday through saturday from 12 to 4 now this art walk which takes place on saturday what time does it start again four o'clock so four o'clock in the afternoon yeah. uh and uh, for people that are listening it's not going to be it's not going to be a, a an energetic hard walk to do right no i yeah. just i'm myself i'm calling it a walk and talk and please uh, ask questions I'll even answer the question that I get, which is, how long did that take you? <laughs> <laughs> I do. And then the, the answer, basically, is until it's finished. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so. Well, well 
Uh, well, uh, good luck with that. Hold on uh, to the thought that the weather's going to be great. And uh, once again, people can see your work, The Art of Alan Blackman, inspired by Audubon. Uh, like we said, running through the 25th from noon until 4. Alan, thanks for getting up so early in the morning and talking with us. Oh, listen, I'm up. Thank you very much for having me on, Marshall. I really appreciate it. All right. Take care, Alan. Uh, thank you, so. Bye. Right, bye-bye. Alan Blackman this morning here on Robin Hood Radio. Uh, and once again, the art of uh, J.D. Audubon.